Uh, BIS, Department of Business Innovation and Skills, is, is clearly central, seen to be central, to uh, the economic uh, angst of the age and the growth agenda for the UK. And if you think about it, we've got nothing left to dig up. Uh, we're not going to beat the world on cheap labour. So all that's left, one way or another, is to be smart. And so knowledge is fundamental in that enterprise producing knowledge, disseminating knowledge, exploiting knowledge. So research and education and innovation based on knowledge and research. Uh, so I would say, and I think the evidence of the relative protection of uh, research budgets in the spending review and the additional money, 100 million, that was found in the last budget to put into uh, science and innovation campuses uh, is evidence actually that politicians get it. They get the fundamental importance of, of science and research. And what's interesting about um, the current organization of government departments is that if you take that kind of mantra of knowledge production, dissemination, exploitation, it does actually shout to you that actually having higher education in that same uh, box as uh, innovation makes a lot of sense. So um, we have in one place now within government uh, the overall policy and budgetary uh, grip on all the money that goes into the universities, all the money that goes through the research councils and technology strategy board. And uh, at the moment, as you will know from recent history, that has been relatively protected. So from a political point of view, Current politicians get the importance of science and research and its fundamental importance in underpinning whatever kind of successful economy the UK can have. So what about nano from that perspective? Um, what, one of the problems that nano presents for, for government is, it's not quite true these days, but historically uh, the government when it's tried to muck about with the economy has looked at sectors and it thought it knew what it meant by sectors, but, or particular technologies. The problem with nano, from a poli politician's point of view, is there's no graspable single technology. It's uh, you know, all over the place, uh, scales on which different technologies operate, wide range of materials and processes. So it, it's quite difficult to sort of locate. What do you, what's the policy about nano? What would it mean? Um, on the other hand, depending which estimates you take, uh, Nano currently is involved in something over $250 billion worth of products. That was back in 2009, estimated to grow to uh, $2.5 trillion by 2015. That sort of order of magnitude. So this is something that's absolutely fundamental to um, economy and products of the future. So. Politicians get investment in science and research and they increasingly get because we can educate them and we can educate them together and the existence and the impact of this center is one of the ways in which we do that, uh, that this area is of fundamental economic importance in addition, of course, to the fascination of the science itself. But if you're in government, there's a wider set of issues that perhaps you don't tend to think about on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and if, uh, to trigger your thoughts on this, I will say GM crops. Um, evaluating the potential risks of nanomaterials, both to health and the environment, um, is critical. If you look at it from a government point of view. And all of us have a huge interest in ensuring that nano doesn't become the next GM, as it were and that we look carefully at both communication to the public, public understanding, and the way in which regulation is or isn't uh, generated. Uh, so uh, the recent stuff, I don't know if you saw it from the Chief Scientific Advisors in Whitehall, was that when we move to regimes of risk assessment, we have to do this case by case in product terms, not by particle. So you don't damn a particle, but you might damn a product. Uh, in research terms, um, the 
strength of the UK research base is, is fantastic and this particular exemplar is something um, we can all be uh, very proud of. Um, there are also knock-on technological effects in terms of instrumentation, uh, in terms of knock-on effects down the supply chains. We had a glimpse just now of the effect that nano may have in the, in the drug delivery uh, areas and that again is absolute major economic importance just in terms of, of value. Another thing that politicians have to take account of is the um, wider international structure, in particular the EU. We're in the process of moving from the Framework 7 programs into a new regime, which I think is currently called the 2020 something or other, Horizon. Um, we have to be in there and fight for both the nature of the programs, the funding mechanisms, in order to make sure that the UK uh, does well. At the moment, we've, I think we received about uh, 20 million euros in the last EU call for dedicated uh, nano funding, and a lot of that went through health, ICT, and infrastructure. Um, thus far, in Europe as well, nano has not polarized um, public debate, uh, as in the GM case. And again, we have to look very carefully at what happens in the EU because a lot of regulation these days is actually driven at EU rather than national level. So in addition to the excitement of the science, in addition to the economic impact, uh, what government also has to worry about is the general public uh, acceptance and environment uh, for things like GM and, and uh, synthetic biology and nano and we have to do, make sure that we create an environment uh, where we don't get into the GM issue again. Back in terms of um, government policy, um, although there's relative protection for science and research budget, these are sort of hard times, uh, in particular in terms of capital and investment in facilities, and I think it was mentioned in one of the earlier talks, that we're increasingly going to be looking for and having to encourage cooperation rather than uh, two decades worth of just pure competition between leading institutions. And this, again, is a wonderful exemplar of what you get in terms of critical mass and exploitation of investment in facilities if you bring together uh, fantastic institutions uh, like these. So the operating model of this center is a fantastic example um, for all of us. Uh, and uh, others have mentioned the interdisciplinary um, implications of all that, so I won't, I won't say that. Um, let me instead... There was a, uh, back in June 2010, there was a Research Council's UK paper on nano, and uh, more recently the New Scientist has had a blog on UK investment in nanotechnology. So from, from a government point of view, you know, we're looking ahead, where do we go uh, from here? Um, in terms of Research Council portfolio, clearly, as, as Leslie said, the, the investment from EPSRC, TSB, and others is going to remain uh, substantial. Um, clearly, the current government has a major interest in pulling through research into innovation, into growth, um, as we in the trade call it, excellence with impact. Um, and that pressure that interest on the part of government to get impact from research will always uh, continue and in some ways funders are always between a, a rock and a hard place. If we take no notice of the impact agenda I can assure you funding for science and research will drop. Uh, if we take too much notice of the impact agenda then maybe we'll undermine the, the fundamental brilliant science on which everything else is based. So there's always a debate and a tension and a rock and a hard place. Uh, the other thing I, I should mention is this is not just an interest on the part of biz as the funders of research, but the interesting thing about nano, of course, is it's sort of everywhere and gets into everything. So um, in the Environmental Nanoscience Initiative, for example, we've got NEP, NERC, EPSERC, uh, MRC, but we've also got the Department of Health and DEFRA, and DEFRA has major funding uh, into nano uh, from that environmental perspective and we're working in that space with the UK Environmental Protection Agency. So, as you see, from a political point of view, 
fund the science, let the scientists get on with it, but there are regulatory and environmental and other issues that have to be handled uh, at government level. Um, the commercialization, what the next steps, the blogs and the debates and new scientists, what are the key challenges going forward to enable successful uh, commercialization? Um, that commercialization again takes place within regulatory environments and so we have to be careful, particularly at the EU level, that we don't get legislations um, which somehow treat uh, nanotechnologies and uh, science as some sort of global uh, thing to be regulated but rather look at specific projects and specific uh, interventions. So all that and um, how in this complex environment um, do we actually convince ministers that we're getting uh, the bang for the buck? Um, all that is what happens in Victoria Street and is not as exciting as what happens in this room and in the laboratories around it. But I can assure you that the, from the political perspective and from the perspective of the current government, there is really, honestly, a genuine commitment to investment in science and research and a view of it as fundamentally important. The downside is that they take a lot of interest in it and what you do with the money. But finally, congratulations, I would say, from, from Vince and David on all you've done in this centre.